Good morning. Uh, this is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society. And I'm a general practitioner, uh, but I've done nothing but orthodontics for about the last 45 years. And, and I want to pass on some, uh, I feel like, very important things that I have uh, learned during these uh, many years of doing orthodontics and uh, today I want to talk about deep bite cases or these are dental deep bites where the uh, upper front teeth usually cover up the lower front teeth completely you don't even see them and you have to go in and open these bites up and uh, the tendency is for you to increase the vertical height of the lower third of the face or make it a high angle case uh, and uh, this is hard to deal with if you get somebody that's a real high angle case and you get in there and get to working on them you will make them even higher and that messes up the appearance of the face greatly if you take anybody beautiful facial structure and add another half inch or three quarters of an inch to the vertical height of the lower third uh, that just messes up the uh, facial appearance terribly so i want you to learn how to deal with high angle cases we always in teaching people Orthodontists say, well, stay away from the high angle cases. Send them off or refer them out. Don't try to do uh, real high angle cases. That's uh, where the vertical height of the lower third is uh, excessive and is looking pretty bad. So, but if these high angle cases have closed dental bite, in other words, they're the upper teeth cover over the lower teeth and you've got to open this up so that you can position the jaw properly in there and if you don't know what you're doing you will make the case even higher and that's what I want to cover here what we use to do this now uh, we put bonded blocks on the posterior part of the mouth if you want to lower the vertical height of the face, you bond these acrylic blocks on the posterior part to cover the molar and uh, the bicuspids uh, with a acrylic block that may be uh, two or three uh, millimeters in height. And this causes the patient the person you're working on there is going to bite a lot more and they press their teeth down in doing that and they keep it from becoming higher angle in other words uh, uh, when you go to elevate the anterior teeth well let me get into that a little more when i got some pictures there to show you and i think it'll be easier for people to understand it uh, looking at the picture uh, now there's several other things wrong with this case uh, uh, the caved in by cuspids which I'm going to uh, we've got a video on that that's caused from a, a vacuum suction uh, that people do at night their, their tongue they suck their tongue backwards and it puts a negative pressure on it we've, uh, we've got a video on that and it's class two on one side and it's class one on the other side and the the lower arch is a little more crowded than the upper arch but whenever you have a class two i mean a class one and you've got a deep bite it has to be crowded and there are a lot of rotations in here and it's a slightly high angle case but not a excessive but I'm using these blocks like I was dealing with a uh, high angle that's a lot worse than this one is right here. Uh, 
Uh, I'll point that out when we get to these pictures. Now this is a young man who uh, these pictures were taken later in the treatment of the case. That was a real nice young guy and I don't know why I don't have starting pictures but uh, these pictures were taken in 1970 uh, when we started him in 1979 and that's a just a few years that have passed. But we, uh, but the thing that's happening here, it doesn't matter whether it was 10 years ago or 100 years ago, it's the same blooming thing that you're dealing with. Uh, and this is a deep bite case. I mean, the upper front teeth, you don't even see the lower front teeth. So we're going to have to raise these teeth up and then the lower ones which are inside there we're going to have to take them down. Now in doing that uh, you have to learn a little bit about the uh, physics and just the thing that takes place. Now if you put pressure on these teeth to go up you have to do it off of the molars back here. And it puts exactly the same amount of pressure on the upper tooth, upper molar to go down that you put on these teeth to go up. Now, it is four times harder to intrude a tooth as it is to extrude a tooth. If you have um, uh, some people have done research on that. I didn't do it. But that's what they tell me. And I know it is much harder if you want to intrude a tooth. It's much harder than it is to extrude one. Uh, so that is a, I'm going to say that's a fact. That uh, it is very much more difficult to intrude a tooth than it is to extrude. Now, if the two teeth are the same identical bone structure and everything else, and you push one of them up by pulling the other one down, this one will go up a lot less than this will go down over here. Let me erase all these arrows, and you can see a little better here. And so this is the principle that this is based on and we're able to do that without increasing the vertical height of the lower third of the face simply because we take advantage of the chewing of the case. Now if the case is a mouth breather and an infantile swallower that doesn't bite their teeth together uh, you've got a bigger problem than you had. Uh, so you have to, you try to get function worked out before you start on these. And if somebody swallows, uh, well, they swallow two, like 2,000 times a day, or we do swallow about that much. And uh, you try to swallow, if you swallow it correctly, you try to swallow and not bite together. And it'll be hard for you to do that. Um, shown people so much that I can do it, but you you activate a completely different set of nerves to do that. And then the teeth take a lot less force during the day. Let's see, if you do 2,000 times in a day, and if you bit together with a pound and a half or two pounds of force, well, that would be 4,000 pounds that these teeth have resisted during the day and that tells you where the vertical dimension of the face is. You can talk about it all you want to and come up with all kind of theories but if you take the pressure of the occlusion away from the teeth they will exfoliate or move toward one another and it is uh, really ruins the appearance of the facial structure to do that. So we want to intrude these teeth and not have these teeth come together one bit. 
So we put a bonded block on these teeth and they bite on them. And if you don't think they bite on it, you bond something on your lower teeth. This bonds you something about two to three millimeters and you see what you do. You will bite on that thing just almost constantly and you will push on it and these teeth will not move down toward one another one bit while you raise or lower the lower anterior teeth. Now you may say, well this is just a bunch of, uh, this is not right, but you try it and see. And you can do a high angle case. So I'm telling anybody that's uh, getting into orthodontics and hasn't dealt with high angle cases, this is something you need to understand. And so we'll go through this and try to pass that on. But I can take a high angle case and actually, and it'll have a deep bite dental, and I'll level the bite out dental and actually lower the vertical height of the face to some extent. Not, uh, not very much, but to some extent. Okay, you look at it from the front and it's, it is deep. I mean, you don't see the lower anterior teeth at all. And uh, when we go over and look at the other side, this is almost a perfect class one. I mean, that's got all the six keys and all the goody stuff on there, and that looks good, you know. This is nice. And if you have a class one case and you've got a deep bite, You've got to have a crowding in the lower anterior. Now this is almost a class two division too, you know, where these teeth are tucked back like this and the lateral is out over the uh, front of it. So there's several other deals and then the, the bicuspids are kind of sucked in on the side. And I worried with this for years, trying to figure out why or how there's no way you could get the muscles to push these teeth in until I woke up one night with this tremendous suction in my mouth. Your tongue had pulled back and forth and that suction brings these teeth in. Um, and that doesn't happen to everybody but it happens in enough cases and there's not too many people who know why these bicuspids are in. Now you don't see it until we look straight down at the teeth and you can see the bicuspids are laying like this. The cuspids still out, the molars are out. They're stronger teeth, but the bicuspids have gone in here. And that's something you're dealing with. We got a little problem here. That's not, there's no problem, but we're going to round this whole thing out and you'll see when we finish it up. Oh, how that fits. I don't show all the uh, ins and outs of getting there, but I'll show you the finished product here in a little bit. And the upper bicuspids are in and the lower bicuspids are in. I mean, they come in like that. And that's caused by a vacuum that the tongue creates in your mouth and it's usually during the night. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I could not understand how this could happen until that happened to me. And then I know what caused that to happen. Okay. Now, we do our intruding wires. You can start out on day one if you'll just put these double uh, two on your six-year molar bands have a double tubes here and triple like you've got a headgear tube and a uh, regular tube and here's your auxiliary tube. This is the auxiliary tube which we've got the intruding wire in it and your your regular arch wire that goes in here is in this uh, upper tail. And if you want to do the orthodontics like I do it, uh, then have your bands made up with triple tubes up above and double tubes 
the down below and then I put my lower I have them spot well the brackets on my lower six year motor band or on all the, the bands on the motors three quarters of a millimeter lower than they normally do and that keeps these upper cusps from hitting that band if you want to uh, use this system now I like a over and eight um, slots I like to use smaller wires you can torque better you can just do so many things better with it and in the big problems that you come up with expansion with the arch wire I do that with the big daddy arch wire we can do that so much better but with that than you can uh, an 022 uh, arch wire in there so both of these wires right here now are down like this and we put all this on the first day now this one is brought up and hooked on to the, the teeth up above that are highest and you're going to bring them down see and this force that pushes these teeth down is pushing this tooth up it may be hard for you to see that and it's going to lean this tooth back or try to lean it back and so you tie if you get all your space and have the teeth lined up tie the arch wire that goes through the brackets back so that they cannot uh, this can't expand anymore if you need space just leave it alone it'll open up but open and get the upper out of the way first and then get the lower out of the way never expand the lower teeth and run them into the back of the upper teeth this is a no no plus you can create a TMJ problem you can crowd the condyle back against the retrodiscal tissue and cause a TMJ problem simply by expanding the lower teeth and not expanding the upper and uh, this is something that uh, I don't know that uh, people everybody doing orthodontics certainly doesn't understand that but they need to uh, okay now this arch wire here is way up here I'm going to down hook it to these teeth right here and it's trying to pick these teeth up it has the same force pushing these down and I do not want these teeth to go down I do not want these teeth to go up so I put this block of acrylic back here in the posterior part of the mouth and people bite on this and the occlusion keeps this from rising but yet it allows these to go up and uh, that's brought out on the video on the birth of the intruding arch wire and you put all this on one the first day if you want to uh, and it'll lower the time that you spend in the orthodontic thing do it by say it'll take uh, in some cases it'll take two or three months off of that because you've got to go in and get the teeth lined up good enough just to put a heavy enough arch wire in there that's got some expansion in it and we just go around that whole thing uh, and do this now <clears throat> let me uh, all right here's a little closer look at this bonded ball now some cases that we are going to open the bite dentally we want them to have some low angle cases where a person's chin is coming up too close to their nose and they want to gain a little height in the vertical part of the face then we bond blocks in the anterior part and this bites down and these are free then to come down and these are free to go up and you can add to the vertical height of the face so you can kind of control the vertical height of the face by how you uh, 
intrude the upper, I mean the anterior teeth, the lower and the upper teeth. If you're intruding these teeth, that helps it. Now this is a an important thing to know. Not this is just a a case that illustrates that. And I'm going to go over some more deep pipe cases. That's another good picture there. Now look at these teeth are in, but we're going to bring them out. You see, now one of these teeth is is he got he got hit or something. It's uh, dark, and we didn't kill it, the nerve in it or anything with our orthodontics. It was that way. Uh, so, all right, we're going to go ahead and uh, come in now here. Just some more views of these blocks. You really can just bond this triad acrylic right on the top of the teeth and then you cut a groove in it and push it together and you'll pop half of it off, you know, and then you can get the other half. You don't want to put anything that's hard to get off on there. Uh, don't try putting any real composites on there. You won't ever get it off. You'll have to grind it out. But this stuff will come off pretty good. But it serves to, to more or less make that person bite more than they normally would. And these teeth will not move together if you put these blocks on there like that. Now, we got some problem here that I don't know what's going on. Maybe the husher. Okay, this is just another view of it, and I'm going to run through this pretty quick. And we finally, with the blocks in there, get these things leveled out, and then we'll come in and take the blocks off. Now, this is the intruding arch. You see, we come out of there, and uh, this is put around, and when we, this actually this wire would go way down and when we raise it up it tightens that loop let me go back and show that to you when we raise that it tightens this spring and that makes it push down harder and we'll get this leveled out and then we're going to take the intruding wire off and we take the bond and lock off now this at this point now, you see we're just about leveled out. Uh, these teeth here were down here somewhere. Now these went down and these went up. And we got the height just about where we were. This was the left side of the mouth. It was class 1 to start. And it's still class 1. The other side of the mouth, we got it to class 1. And now, look at the arch form. You see, these bypasses were in like that. And this was in them. But they're out now in a good arch form. That tooth there's not out far enough. A little bit off over here. Uh, but we've got a nice arch form in there. Uh, whoops, we jumped over. Now we're just about to finish. We've got this down here. This was way on up here. Now it's down here. And these teeth have not risen up hardly any. They probably have gone down some. You can tell that on yourself if you want to. Now this uh, retainer was made back in 1970. No, this is 82. 79, 82. Uh, I made this retainer and we don't solder these joints there and more we have this whole thing come over here and then we solder this together and that hardly never breaks this one will pop off you know people will break them from time to time now this is uh, got the upper pretty well finished and we're going to go in and uh, take everything off the bottom I don't do this now, uh, but we left the 
six floor ran tier so we bonded a three to three I just put the three to three before I take anything off uh, now we get it just like we want it and go in there and bond it uh, so now I'm going to show you the start and then where we finish and you see these teeth here so this goes up and they come out too see this is kind of a class 2 division 2 a little bit like that now let's look at the teeth themselves now now we have a slight midline problem and there must be a discrepancy in the size of the teeth because I think the the cuspids are in class 1 pretty pretty good now this was the uh, right side of the mouth which was class 2 kind of division 2 type of case and there it is after we finish and the same thing over here and we kept it in that position right there and these teeth that were way in like this now watch them they'll be out here and of course this is lined up pretty good there now that's uh, lined up this is that tooth that he got hit uh, this tooth got hit or something and it killed the nerve in it uh, but that was not our orthodontics so, uh, created that and there's a retainer it's not all the way up in the mouth when it's up good this is up tight right in here and that's a little bite plate that the lower teeth come up against now I don't like this guy so we now go completely and we saw it back in here just laying the two wires one on top of the other and that's a broader thing and it stays together so we have people that have to wear them that may have had them wear these retainers for 30 years or 35 years you know if necessary if you've got some problem that they can't you can't overcome then you got to wear retention for years and years if you keep the teeth straight now here was the lower arch it had a lot of crowding and not a lot but a, you know, we're going to bring this out uh, and I'm going to push this and there the lower arch is right now and if you go back here and look at where it was and here's where it is when we finish that now, I didn't do a good job lining these up and I didn't have a three to three on there I should have got these just perfect because they'll hit the back side of the upper anterior in different places and these teeth will shift a little bit in doing that and here's the young man's facial structure and it certainly didn't increase it now he wasn't a bad uh, case at all so uh, I think uh, but I use this block to make sure we did not elevate this vertical height of the face one bit so this is uh, something that's important for you to know and I've taken uh, longer than I want to uh, but it's, it, we did this in less than 30 minutes and if you're not really to spend a little time to learn something that you need to know, especially if you're just into orthodontics and you don't know how to treat these high angle cases, this is not a bad one, but uh, you can use what I did here on the worst high angle cases and not increase them. So thank you for watching and I'm going to uh, sign off here. We appreciate your uh, being interested in this and let me know if you